Hi, welcome to the MSC module Servitization Class 12, uh, Service Pricing and Value Capture. Today's objectives, different pricing models used in services, to be able to understand how to use modularity to support service pricing, identify value, to benchmark prices and understand willingness to pay, describe the risk inherent between the different cost and revenues models in the business model. So we're still in part three, service price and capture value. Watch the video, the video is very helpful. What do you already know on pricing on services? Um, we'll run through some examples and then share them. There's many, many different pricing models, um, as many as you, you can kind of imagine. Now, Oscar Wilde said this well, nowadays people know the price of everything and the value of nothing. Um, that was a few years ago, so it's even more true now than it was in those days. Revenue streams, how are we gonna structure them? Um, a colleague of mine, my old boss, um, Ian Hall at G, said, well, the price has to be about right. Then how do we structure it? What's the revenue that we use? Is it very product orientated? Is it transactional? Is it relationship? Is it use orientated? Is it outcome orientated? All of these different models work and allow us to construct a different price model. Whether they're acceptable is questionable at times. Revenue streams, I've put some different revenue streams here. Have a look at them, think about them. What do I mean by out of scope? What do I mean by performances? What do I mean by variable pay per X usage? And how about fixed? How, does, how do I get the customer to always buy with me and have the lowest threshold. Once I've got them, they, they, they become effectively trapped. This is a model that we put together, um, trying to get to the fair price. This is an initial prototype, value-based pricing. Uh, it's got many inputs to try and identify what I've called the fair price here. Um, the triangulation is really how we have to get to it. There's no science to tell you what the price is that you're going to actually charge for the job and win the job. Um, it's 50% luck, 50% hard work, 50% good homework. So it's a difficult job. And it's one of those things that you'll always get wrong. Um, we will probably want to do a cost build-up to see how that fits. We're going to have a look at benchmark prices from the market. We're going to have a look at the price paid and really try and identify the value in use from the customer. That's probably too much. We're going to look at the total value. Try and find out where the willingness to pay is. It could be higher, it could be lower than what the cost plus approach gives us. And we're trying to come back to a value-based price and then we'll come back and we'll recost it based on what it is we are actually doing and what the customer values. Don't do what the customer doesn't value. Pricing pressure is increasing. It's always getting tougher. Buyers are getting harder. Looking at maintenance, so really about services here. How do we highlight these? How do we understand the customer's buying processes? Why is it important? Um, Mario said manufacturers should price their most advanced service offerings according to value rather than cost or competition based strategies. Completely agree with him. Pricing is also the most powerful tool in the toolbox. Um, a 1% increase in margin gives us a 1% increase in cash and, 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 and all the way through. So we're trying to get that improved. Very, very simple and straightforward, you would have thought. Anderson, um, what's the difference in worth of two offerings from my firm? How do, how do we compare the value? How do we compare the differences in the price? The buyer here is identifying what the value is. And value is the fundamental building block of pricing. 
we need to understand the objectives of the pricing strategy. What are we trying to do? What are we trying to achieve through pricing? We've got three models here, cost plus, competition market base and value base. Cost plus, um, I take the scope, I add a margin to it, and then I find out whether it's the right price. But it could be the wrong, the right price, but for the wrong scope. So this is something that we have to bear in mind. Cost plus does not give you the best value. Competition market based, um, for the standard scope, we know what the market price is. Very, very straightforward. Again, we don't know if that's actually under or over estimating the value that we should be capturing. Value based means that we start off with a value. How much is it worth to do this job? Then we come up with a price, then work backwards and get scope, cost, and hopefully we get some margin left. Value based pricing does not mean higher margins. It means a better chance of extracting the appropriate value from a particular project. There's lots of tools and methods for pricing. Um, and we need to understand how they all fit together. So what we did is we took interviews and then did cross case analysis. Very straightforward, six firms, what the heck did you do? How did you do it? And we looked at them in completely different markets. Price and objectives, um, competition pricing, service quality related, that's a good one. Stability in the market, some people wanted to be consistent. Some had just return on sales targets, so they were just trying to maximize of that. But often what they missed there was the fact that some services demand a higher premium um, for whatever reason in the market. Market-based, cost plus, customer value and willingness to pay. Too few firms we find here valued the customer value particularly clearly. Um, it was almost like there was a laziness. Um, if you don't understand the customer value, you will not be able to defend your price. How do we identify that customer value? There's gaps in the pricing strategies, most of the firms, so they couldn't quite bridge the gap. Benchmarking helped. Um, people gave trade discounts because it made people feel good bundling sometimes, um, but it was clear that in most of the firms there's limited segmentation. So if I look at all the tools and methods, um, benchmarking um, based on the market, cost build-up was also very popular, uh, negotiated pricing, that was interesting because that actually began to show you some value because people start to negotiate price and scope at the same time. Discounts, it's just really looking at the cost base, you're handing money away. Historic, market base, so it's kind of benchmarking, price lists. Some people like price lists, but not enough of them, I think. Sales manager, well, we left it all to them. No, not probably the best way to do it. But equally, you have to engage with the sales manager. Um, bundling, very important. Willingness to pay, well, we think we can get away with this price, what do you think? Understanding the cost revenue model was done not in all the cases, which I was kind of surprised about. Demand capacity based pricing. Um, some firms didn't do it because they like consistency in the market. It does mean that you're undercharging at times. Um, but is there a better way to deal with um, price increase or surge pricing? Um, Uber seemed to be doing it quite well. Value in use was low. Payback return on investment was low, which was a bit of a surprise. If I know a company's got a CapEx approach to investment um, of, say, two-year payback, well, I'm going to price it 18 months, 19 months, 20 months paybacks. It's a very simple tool for helping me. Key observations. Um, we need to align the price and objectives, strategies and tools. So they all add up together, they all make sense. Too often this wasn't done properly. Conclusions from the work, pricing is challenging. There's many, many dimensions. It's not a cost plus calculation. And if you do pricing as cost plus in my exam, you will get an F. 
many firms had very clear pricing strategies. No, mostly they had unclear pricing strategies. Nobody really understood the pricing. Why do we do it like this? The only thing they could understand was cost plus X percent, which really isn't the way to price. Really, we need to have objectives, tools in line with the pricing strategy. Otherwise, what's above doesn't work. We need to understand pricing more. We need more effective pricing tools to help us. And those price tools have to support the value creation. Service on the same pump in two different markets. One day loss availability costs you a million bucks. The other costs you almost nothing. We have to think about that value in use. Moving on to modularity. Um, it's really making the offer simple for people. Swiss do it really well, which is why I've got a picture of their website here. Like Classic Flex, it's really about matching the market with the customers. People don't value, don't pay for stuff they don't value. It's just a cost to them. Benchmarking, we need to understand the benchmarks. Understand as many benchmarks as you can get a hold of. Um, Irene NG here, she wrote a good book on this. Um, And it's important in services to understand how to do it um, and how much value you should capture. Um, think of Van der Waal. How do they do it? What are they doing? We get aircraft arriving, create the value proposition, describe it. Workouts based on some simple assumptions, what the willingness to pay could be. Use benchmark numbers that are relevant to them. Now let's look at risk and revenue. What's the difference between the left-hand side and the right-hand side? Let me put them on the revenue streams. You've seen that, the cost structure. Well, the difference between them is risk. They don't line up. I have to manage that risk as the supplier. I might be really good at doing that, I might be bad at doing it. If I'm bad at it, I'm gonna run out of business. Think about how that works. How to keep the cash flows, income, and um, costs aligned as best you can or deal with the discontinuity between the two. Closing. You understand different pricing models and services. You've seen some modularity to support pricing and identify the willingness to pay. You've created benchmark prices and understand the willingness to pay and you can describe the risk and cost, the risk between the cost and revenues in the business model. It's also a book chapter in the Civitization book, which I'd recommend that you read. And uh, thanks very much.